an administrative law judge found Starbucks guilty of egregious and widespread misconduct, widespread coercive behavior, a general disregard for the employee's fundamental rights. We are going to spend some time uh, taking a look at what happened in the Senate last week. Um, yeah. Bernie Sanders held a hearing on Starbucks union busting. Howard Schultz was called before the committee uh, to testify. He almost didn't, uh, but then he was threatened with, with a subpoena, and so he ended up acquiescing and testifying before the committee uh, because it was seemed pretty likely that he would be subpoenaed if he didn't, and I guess he didn't want that on his record or whatever, but... Uh, you know, so the the hearing was about Starbucks u- union busting, and it has been totally well documented uh, right. across the country. There's really no doubt if you are a fair person that Starbucks has violated the law in response to the union campaign. Uh, but throughout the hearing, Schultz denied law breaking, and this first clip that we've got for you today is pretty indicative of his stance throughout the hearing. Do you understand that in America, workers have a fundamental right to join a union and collectively bargain to improve wages, benefits, and working conditions? Do you understand that? I understand, and we respect the right of every partner who wears a green apron, whether they choose to join a union or not. Are you aware that NLRB judges have ruled that Starbucks violated federal labor law over 100 times during the past 18 months, far more than any other corporation in America? Sir, Starbucks Coffee Company unequivocally, and let me set the tone for this very early on, has not broken the law. Thanks. Are you aware that on March 1st, 2023, An administrative law judge found Starbucks guilty of, quote, egregious and widespread misconduct, end quote, widespread coercive behavior, and showed, quote, a general disregard for the employee's fundamental rights, end quote, in a union organizing campaign that started in Buffalo, New York in 2021. Are you aware of that? I'm aware that those are allegations, and Congress has created a process that we are following. And we're confident that those allegations will be proven false. All right, Mr. Schultz. Wow. They're not just allegations. They are rulings from administrative law judges. Just because he has appeals left does not mean that they are only simply allegations. They are rulings from judges with detailed evidence. I mean, you can go and read the rulings. Right with citations to the evidence as to why they are violating the law. It is not just allegations. And the idea that you can get away with saying that is just, is wild, is wild. Yeah, to say right out the gate, we haven't broken the law? Right. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, really, dude? Really? Really? Senator, we haven't broken the law. Exactly. Okay. And S- Senator Chris Murphy from Connecticut, I believe, is is where yeah. he's from. He lays it out it just just how silly it is. The idea that Schultz is asking us to believe that Starbucks has not broken the law. Right. To square your testimony in which you insist that you rigorously follow the law. Yes. With with overwhelming evidence from the organizations that are charged with enforcing American labor law, that that is not the case. It is akin to someone who has been ticketed for speeding a yeah. hundred times, yeah. saying, I've never violated the law because every single time, every single time the cop got it wrong. That, that would not be a believable contention if someone was to make that before the committee. And so, um, I find it hard to believe your insistence that notwithstanding this extraordinary set of decisions, reinstating workers, forcing stores to be reopened, that you are, in fact, 
consistently abiding by the law as your testimony is before this committee. I, I don't. Yeah. And before that, Howard Schultz actually cited the case of the seven Memphis baristas who were fired and then ordered to be reinstated as an example of how the deck is stacked against him and how actually no the we haven't violated the law and this is this is how and what he doesn't tell the folks there is that the mechanism that actually forced the reinstatement of those workers was initiated by a Trump appointed federal district court judge mm. A Trump appointee said that Starbucks has violated the law so egregiously that they must reinstate these baristas. And he wants you to believe that just because there are appeals left in that process, that process has not totally played out yet. Just because there are appeals left, he wants you to believe that not only in that case where the workers were able to get a Trump appointee to side with them, not only in that case, but in every one of the hundreds of cases against Starbucks across the country that they are not guilty. Right. It's absurd. It strains credulity. It's absolutely wild. And he also, you know, throughout this, he talks about, oh, I've got... I've got so much respect for everybody who puts on the green apron. He loves that phrase. The people who put on the green apron. He loves that phrase. And something that is indicative of the actual amount of respect that Starbucks and its corporate managers have for people who put on the green apron was on display in the hearing because Schultz was first to testify, and then immediately after Schultz, there was an intermission, and then after that, there was a second panel to come on after Schultz. The panel included one Starbucks worker, a former Starbucks worker, who alleges that he was wrongfully fired, a um, expert on labor law, and then also, funny enough, former Alabama congressperson Bradley Byrne uh, for <laughs> representing a quote-unquote whistleblower from the National Labor Relations Board about the unfair election process um, that took place in Kansas at one election. Uh, the Starbucks corporate manager's all left when the Starbucks workers time to testify came up. Hmm. The workers and the managers all heard Howard Schultz testify first. And then immediately after Schultz finished testifying, everybody from the government, from the company side left. Everybody from the company side left. They didn't even have enough respect for these workers to put on a face and sit through their testimony. And that is consistent. That's totally consistent with what we hear from Starbucks workers all across the country who <clears throat> in the bargaining sessions that have happened, and we'll talk about this later, but in the bargaining sessions that have happened, they describe being treated with contempt, not even by Starbucks management, who are largely silent at the bargaining table, but by the Littler Mendelssohn attorneys that they have hired, being treated with contempt, and Starbucks workers report that you can tell on their faces that they ha hate having to even be in the room with a working person, much less having to sit on the other side of a table from them as an ostensible equal. That's the kind, and, and they, they displayed that. They displayed that level of contempt at the hearing last week. It's just, just totally disgusting. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project. And you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. Which side are you?
you want.